There is still an America that is wild and clean and beautiful. But there is also a dying dream of America where the waters are poisoned by the wastes of man and the breeze is strangled by the fires and fumes of civilization. No part of America still retains more of nature's original work than the state of Oregon, a paradise for those who treasure the unspoiled in sight, in smell, in sound. But who are these foul strangers in Oregon's paradise? At scores of such places along the rivers of Oregon where filth-loaded water pours from cities and from factories, the scrapfish gather, and their presence betrays water made sick and weary, water in which only the scavenger thrives. Oregon, the verdant land, where a thousand streams bring water plentiful and clean and make possible a bounty that a nation must envy. But raw sewage on a suburban street breeds disease like hepatitis, and serve shocking notice that the days of paradise may be numbered. The air of Oregon can be as sweet and fresh as its waters, but the very jobs they draw soil the air above and the waters below in numbers and ways faster than present planning and prevention can match. In government and in industry, men and dollars are put to work to keep Oregon's advantage. But in many places and in many ways, the effort is not enough, so that filth fallout costs you dollars and help.
Portland Skidmore's will literally made Old Town Skidmore Fountain happen. The prominent Portland druggist wanted the city to have it after he saw similar fountains in Versailles, France. Skidmore bequeathed $5,000 when he died in 1883, and with private fundraising, five years later, Skidmore Fountain was dedicated. The bronze and granite statue, Portland's first public piece of art. It anchored a Portland entertainment and later warehouse district. The fountain, when it was made, was to provide water for people, horses, and dogs. So there's water at different levels. Renowned sculptor Olin Warner designed the Skidmore Fountain, one of the ladies thought to be the image of his wife. It cost $18,000 in 1888, well over $2 million in today's dollars. It remains in place, even though people did want to move it at the time, but it has remained here, and this has still become a center of activity for the city. From Saturday Market to SantaCon, Skidmore Fountain has always been in the middle of a good time. And if it were up to beer magnate Henry Weinhardt, the times could have been even better. Legend has it that Weinhardt offered to pump beer through the fountain at the dedication in 1888, using fire hoses to feed the pumps. Worries about vandalism and theft squelched that idea. So, it never happened. Give credit to Henry for trying. Perhaps the famous inscription, written by Portland poet, author, and attorney C.E.S. Wood, good citizens are the riches of a city, was as much hope as civic pride. The Skidmore Fountain is part of Portland's rough and tumble beginnings, the first landmark in a city that now has many. Ken Boddy, Coin 6 News.